It's only two days until the start of the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. Remember to download the Sportsmax app to watch the games. Well, track and field, the topic now on the Sportsmax zone. And with the Olympics set to begin this Friday, several of the favorites got in their last piece of competitive action ahead of the games. And boy, did they put in some seriously impressive performances. Well, one of those favorites was Jamaica's Nikisha Price, who ran a scintillating national record and world lead of 48.57 seconds at the 400 meters in the London Diamond League meet. Well, another of these great performances came from Noah Lyles in the 100 meters at the same meet as he ran a personal best 9.81 seconds to win his contest. Well, Lance, top stars, Top form. I can't say I didn't expect this. I really did, especially from Nikisha Price mm. and Noah Lyles. It's been the talk of the town. Yeah, well, Price has been uh, having a breakout year, hasn't she? Because yeah. uh, last year at this time, we didn't project for her to be in the position that she is now. And uh, new personal best, new national record, new meet record, world leading time. Uh, only one Caribbean runner is faster in history over 400 meters on the women's side than Nikisha Price and that's shown in Miller Weibo, the Bahamian who won gold in 2016 and uh, repeated at the Tokyo Olympics as well. So she is in really, really big company. Very small in stature, very slim, uh, doesn't look powerful to the eyes, but clearly she has a lot of power because you have to be powerful to run a 400 meter race as fast as she does. So she obviously is very, very strong. And based on what we have seen in recent months, Mariah, it's reasonable to think that she's favorite for gold at the Olympic Games in, in Paris. That's how remarkably she has improved in this 2024 season. And the performances that we've seen from her in recent months will give a lot of confidence to Caribbean track and field fans that there is a possibility here of yet another Caribbean runner winning gold in the 400 meters because we have seen so many of them in the past 20 years. In the women's on the women's side, Noah Lyles, um, undisputed number one in the world at 200 meters. The 100 has never been his preferred event, but he has championship medal, Noah Lyles, and um, he is the reigning champion over 100 meters, which is to me a testimony to his self belief and also his quality because he's not the best of starters, but he finds a way in those 100 meter races to run past quick athletes in the last 30 meters. So I would think that he has a great shot. Um, I saw a bookmaker's odds list today that suggested that Kishane Thompson, the current world leader and new sensation from Jamaica, is the betting favorite to win the 100 meter gold. Now, that's not surprising to me, given the fact that I think based on what we've seen from him, I think he has the tools to be the best in the world at 100 meters. The only drawback for him is his inexperience at this level because he, is, he has never competed at this level before. But, you know, Stephen Francis is his coach. <laughs> and sometimes with Stephen Francis, that doesn't, that doesn't end up being an impediment because Francis knows how to sharpen them for the big ones. Yeah. And, you know, Lance, um, when I think about Noah Lyle, so I, w I hope you watched it, and I know you didn't, the series Sprint, right? You didn't, <laughs> no, I know. I um, that series uh, made me, you know, really think about Noah Lyle and just get into his mindset. And he appears as if, you know, his confidence is on a massive high just by the things he says, the way he's able to just make these um, statements and not worry about what the backlash will be. And I think, you know, that is something that we really have to look out for because it's one thing to want Kishin to do really well. We have spoken about this before, that it's his first time on this stage, you know, everybody cheering him on. It's the highest level. It's what everybody works towards. So... You would have to be um, misinformed or not too educated on the Olympics in order to bet against Noah Lyles. Despite the fact that we've seen a glimpse already of what Kishane can do. 
I will say, I'm hoping that Kishin can get this one for us from the Caribbean. But Noah Lyles, when he was even interviewed after this race, this 100-meter win, he was speaking about, you know, he still has a lot in the tank and, you know, he just wants to run his, run his rounds over yeah. and over. And that sort of energy is something that you can't underestimate at all. Yeah. Well, what you gleaned from the, the episode that you watched was the same thing that I just mentioned, his yeah. self-belief. There's He's not short on self-belief. So... In sport, at this level, self-belief goes a very, very far away. And there are times that athletes will use personal self-belief and defeat another athlete who may be a little bit more talented than they are. So that's p part of the intrigue of this 100-meter men's event at the Paris Olympic Games because what we have seen from Kishane Thompson, albeit um, a raw talent, yeah. are, are tools that just make him a ready-made world fastest man yeah. well he already is as he has the world lead so it's just a matter of him transitioning what he has inside of him and what he's equipped to deliver to go to the big stage and not be overawed by the 60,000 fans that may be in the stadium watching and focus on his job because it's clear that he has the tools to beat Noah Lyles I have no doubt in my mind that he has the tools to beat Noah Lyles He'll need some mental toughness and the self-belief to get the job done. Yeah, and he can mm -hmm. take some of that from Noah Lyles. Well, the former world and Olympic champion, Johan Blake, had some choice words for the Jamaican public this past weekend. My head is all over the place right now uh, because what I wanted to do at Jamaican trials, I didn't get to do. You know, I, did, I did want to run my final Olympics, I didn't get to. But um, the journey continues the same way. Um, it's definitely, it would, it would be my final Olympics. You know, um, as I said, my own, my own country, Jamaica, doesn't give me the respect. And I'm happy they don't because other people outside do. And um, they appreciate me more than my own country. So, you know, I'm happy that I'm be able to crown elsewhere apart from Jamaica. So I'm just looking to continue doing what I'm doing until I'm happy to step away when it's time. I love winners. And once they're not win, they they're not supporting you. But um, I don't need their support. I have my own support staff. I have my own support team. I'm a self-motivator. This season has been rough, I'm um, telling the truth. I've been battling with a lot of injuries. Um, you know, I'm just fighting the fight because I know to get up. You know, I know that I have tread on the wheel same way because when I look in the race and I see where myself at and I know what is causing my problem, I'm not afraid, you know. So I'll just keep on working. Yeah, that was a lot there. To of mm. course digest he speaks about the fact that he doesn't really think his country is behind him he speaks about the fact Lance, that he can motivate himself he has his team and you know to hear that going into the olympics it's kind of disheartening i don't know how you feel as a jamaican i'm only speaking as a trini on the mm. outside mm. well I, I i i believe his pronouncements were unfortunate because you don't get into a, a public battle with the Jamaican fans in the way that he has and, and end up winning because he had some comments directed at the Jamaican fans that Jamaican fans will react negatively to because yeah. there, there, there are cases of Jamaicans who, who haven't won and they are still loved by, by, by the fans. Having said that, I'll be the first to say that the Jamaican fan is very caustic and they have some very... Um, aggressive and and unkind comments from time to time if athletes don't perform the way that they they believe they could or should so I understand what Johan Blake is saying but the way he has articulated it was to me unwise because the social media platform is a very toxic platform and um, he will not have gained a lot of um, admiration with the things that he said but the fact is that Johan Blake isn't as good now as he was when he was among the world's best. And um, he has his own struggles, as he just tried to explain. But when you try to turn the discussion um, on Jamaicans to say that they are not supporting you and if you don't win, they don't support you. And, um, and this is the first time he has said something like this. Um, it, it's, it's not going to end pretty for him. And it's going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to resuscitate his, his career because um, 
969 is his personal best over 100 meters. Only Usain Bolt has gone faster. Tyson Gay also has a 969, and he's also the second fastest all time over 200 meters. He's nowhere near that now, 19.26. Nowhere near that now. And um, it's, it's disappointing because we know his talent and we know where he has been. But because of the injury issues and advancing age as well, because I don't think we can get away from that, it is clear that it's been very difficult for Johan Blake to perform at the level that we had seen before. Um, we saw Omar McLeod yeah, I was in an say, interview it's recently. It's not the first time an yeah, athlete has come out. Ex ex express disappointment in how fans relate to them. And uh, I, I think there's something to be said about that because Johan Blake gave Jamaican fans a lot of energy and a lot of pride when he was performing at his best. And to hear some of the comments that people make now, to me, I find very disappointing, disgusting even. Yeah. Um, but I just don't think the pronouncements from Johan Blake in the way that he did in this interview um, was wise. But and, Lance, and it will just attract more caustic comments against him. Because, just in his, in his defense, right? Yes. Because I heard you say that like twice already. This is going to have a backlash, and I think it's already having a backlash. But it's not an at athlete's um, strong point to articulate things properly. I don't expect him to, like, to say it in a manner that, you know, um, we expect him to say it, right? He's just expressing how he feels. And I think also it comes from a place of hurt. Sometimes when you're hurt, you, you, may, you may express press your feelings not in the most diplomatic way mm -hmm. and that's what you're trying to say he should have expressed it in a way that mm -hmm. wouldn't create any damage but then if there's this build up um built up hurt mm -hmm. then you just say whatever you want to say and then which is why i mentioned that i understand where he is coming from because obviously he's hurt and i think part of his hurt is his own inability at this stage of his career to deliver even to his own standards that he okay. would have set himself so I am disappointed about the, the, the things that the fans are saying about him. I really think it's, it's unnecessary, some of the comments, and um, cruel in, in, a, in a lot of instances. But there are times athletes must understand that if they articulate things in a certain way, fans are going to react negatively. And the way he singled out Jamaicans in the way he did to say they don't support athletes if they aren't, aren't winning isn't by itself completely true. Okay. And um, there's a tendency for Jamaican fans to, to, to disrespect athletes if they don't win or perform in the way that they, the fans think they should. But to make the blanket statement that Jamaicans haven't supported him is, is something that a lot of Jamaicans can challenge. And I think it's unfortunate that he said it. But I take the point that you made. I think he's hurt. Because when I'm he's, angry, he's hurting. I can, he's oh, hurting. Hurt. Yeah. You he's... know, I, I try to put myself in the athlete's shoe. And sometimes if I'm upset or, you know, angry about the situation, maybe you say something, Lance, but you just... Well, at the end of the day, they have a mic and a camera in front of their mm. faces. Mm. So you say something, trying to express how upset you are about it. And again, mm -hmm. his situation is built up from, you know, what would have happened. And as you said, even mm. his disappointment with his own individual performance, mm. you say it and then you're like, oh, no, maybe I could have rephrased that. But it's yeah, too but, late. And, and that's, the, that's the point I'm trying to make because you are suggesting, and I think you're right, that it's really hurt and mental pain and that, you're not triggered, trying to look that, triggered, weak. that triggered those comments. But in, in a lot of ways, what he said didn't look like someone who is hurting. He sounded dismissive. Because it's called putting up a face. Yeah, but he sounded dismissive as if he doesn't need Jamaican support and so on. And when you go down that road, you're going to feel the, the pressure of, of the public. And I just think that it was unwise of him to articulate the point um, in the way that he did. But um, I, I will go with him to this point. I think that fans from time to time are far too harsh and unkind in the things they say about athletes, especially an athlete like Johan Blake, who is one of the best of all time. The statistics tell you that. Yeah. And uh, an athlete that has given Jamaican fans so much glory and so much happiness, happiness in the past. And it just seems sometimes from his perspective that fans just forget 
what happened the good before times, yeah. and, and, and just look at what is happening now. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up this part of the discussion. Going to take a quick break. Maybe I'll be back with Zone Update 2 and then we continue with our discussion topics. Stay with us.